representations of lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, queer and intersex people in the media have often erased the reality of their identities and lived experiences. And research shows that historically, LGBTQI characters have been stereotyped, portrayed as deviant and dangerous. They have been coded, taunted, ridiculed, silenced, pathologized and killed. Since LGBTQI people are gaining more rights and recognitions, there has been an increase in the number of representations in the media. Positive representations have begun to arise, but visibility is not the only goal. More often than not, nowadays, there is the prevalence of a normative stereotype of the gay person as white, able, urban and usually affluent. This erases the complexity of the experience and identities of different LGBTQI communities. In the media, usually the LGBTQI identity of someone is the primary marker of their character and the storyline. They are made to stand as a cipher for their sexual orientation or gender identity, and they are also made to represent the whole community. Media storylines usually stereotypically focus on coming out narratives, homophobia, violence, and multiple sexual partners. Any other component of their life experience and any other element of their social identity is erased. Bisexual people make up the majority of LGBTQI community. Research shows that they are still underrepresented in the media or they are represented often through harmful tropes. Their sexuality is usually the only point of focus and it is used as manipulation and as a plot device. They are often depicted as inherently untrustworthy and amoral. GLAD is an American media monitoring organization against discrimination of LGBTQI people in the media. GLAD advocates to promote understanding, increase acceptance and advance equality. Its annual reports track the presence of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer characters on the screen. It provides an intersectional lens as it also zooms in to monitor race, disability and gender. The GLAD Media Reference Guide is a style guide of recommendations for writers and journalists to reference in positive, inclusive depiction of LGBTQI people. GLAD also highlights the importance of complex representations through the Vito Russo test. The test asks, is a character identifiably LGBT and not solely or predominantly defined by their sexual orientation or gender identity? as well as tied into the plot in such a way that their removal would have a significant effect. This is a useful tool to reflect on our own production practices. Media outlets are also often misrepresenting trans stories and the lives of trans people. The focus usually revolves uniquely on transition. In this transition narrative, the body of the person is subjected to close scrutiny and policing. The gaze is medicalized because the center of the narrative is about having the wrong body, about surgery and hormones. It erases the fact that all, not all trans people want surgery or take hormones. Passing is reinforced through the display of the pictures of the person before and after transition to scrutinize how they conform to normative scripts of femininity and masculinity. Usually, non-binary identities are erased and there are also a larger number of representations of trans women rather than trans men. This media representation often exclude the voices of trans people themselves and the reality of their lives, focusing only on one aspect of their identity while still upholding discourses around deviancy and violence. Trans Media Watch is a charity that strives to better the media coverage of trans and intersex issues. It helps people working in media industries to understand these issues and produce clear, accurate and respectful material. Not only have there been more and more discussion regarding representation, but the sites of media productions, employment and workplace practices have been interrogated more often as well. For instance, there have been debates questioning the production choices of casting straight and cis actors in LGBTQI roles. In terms of actual media, we have more LGBTQI news media outlets, such as Pink News, which is increasingly attentive to intersectional concerns. Here is a good example. Also, positive action has been taken by the BBC, who have recently appointed Ben Hunt as its first LGBT correspondent. 
giving a perspective on LGBTQI lives through a professional voice of a British gay man with Guyanese and Jamaican heritage. It is also important to mention professional organizations. The Association of LGBTQ Journalists is an organization of journalists, media professionals, educators and students working from within the news industry to foster fair and accurate coverage of LGBTQ issues and tackle workplace concerns and bias. The following interview features the editor of DIVA, Europe's leading magazine for lesbian and bi women. Please listen to Carrie Lyle talking about authenticity regarding representation of lesbian and bi women. She also makes insightful remarks about audiences. <laughs> 